In this, our second nugget in Agile Development Techniques, we'll wrap up the principles of Agile Development Techniques that are strongly recommended to be used in Scrum. In this nugget, we'll focus on continuous integration, check your code in, often, build, and test to ensure that no changes will break anything that's been undone. We'll talk about spikes doing exploratory investigations. We'll talk about branches. Branches are very similar to refactoring. Refactoring is typically related to taking bad code and improving where branches are simply taking complex and simplifying. Code that we branch may in fact be perfect code, but we've just made the determination that we've added enough functionality to the code that it's time to branch it and simplify it. And we'll close off with a few principles for agile development that are typically always employed on projects. The need to have specific cleanup stories to do a little bit of just general housekeeping. And finally, some specific activities that we probably will need to introduce at the end of a sprint series leading up to a release. And we start this nugget with the principle of continuous integration. And we've talked about this already through many of our nuggets when we talked about automated testing. We never called it out as continuous integration, but the need to have automated testing so that we can refactor with confidence, so that we can do test-driven development, et cetera, et cetera. Automated testing is really the root of, or the, the conclusion of, appropriate technique around continuous integration. And continuous integration is all about having automated processes in place. So we do a little bit of coding, and I'm going to stress a little bit of coding. And then we check the code in. Check it in to our code repository. The code repository will run an automated build. And then the code repository or our build environment will do an automated test. And we will have confidence. Our code changes didn't break anything. And I don't think I need to spend a lot of time on this principle of confidence that our code changes didn't break anything because we've talked about why we need that throughout the Nugget series to date. We're going to get there through this principle of continuous integration and it's all around having an efficient process for code check-in for doing automated builds and absolutely for doing automated testing. And again, the key is regularly. I stressed at the beginning, we do a little bit of coding. Our story may only require four hours of coding. I would like to suggest that we don't wait for the four hours of coding is done on the story. We do a little bit of coding. We may do segment one of the story and we do a code build test process. Why? Because we want to have the confidence that little bit of code, the code snippet, didn't break anything and that this code snippet satisfies our test conditions. Now, this, this is not predicated on doing test-driven dri development, but if we're doing test-driven development, it absolutely works to this process, but we still do it even with non test-driven development. We do a little bit of coding. We write a little bit of test cases. We do a code build test and it gives us the confidence that A, we didn't break anything by introducing new code into the module and it gives us confidence that the code we wrote for this segment of the story works perfectly. But again, it has to be the efficient process. The build has to be quick. If I'm suggesting we're going to do a little bit of coding and check the code in after, let's say, an hour's worth of coding and the build takes 15 minutes, that's not going to fly. The build has to be quick. 
And as our systems get more and more complex, the need to have these quick, and I'm saying one minute time frame, becomes a challenge. So often what we will do is we'll come up with a segmented build environment. So we will take our total system and we will segment it. And each segment will be allowed to be run in an efficient process, i.e. that we can do a code check-in build test for the segment of the code that my, my story is specifically focused on, and that will run quickly. But as soon as we move towards this concept of a, a segmented build environment for the efficiency, we absolutely need to also have a end-to-end 100% -end nightly build. And the key is we want to do the system-wide test. If we've done our segmentation appropriately, we're still going to have an extremely high degree of confidence that this code snippet works in and of itself and this code snippet didn't break anything else and if the segmentation is done correctly the likelihood of that code changing anything else in any other unrelated segment of the total system is very low but it's still absolutely critical in my humble opinion that we do the nightly build and that we have the 100% end-to-end system-wide test. Continuous integration. Not critical, not mandatory, but again, it's something Steve thinks is an absolute best practice that needs to be implemented on all Scrum projects. It's that code with confidence process. It's given us the ability that we can take on any story from any developer and make the change and know that our changes didn't break anything. It gives us the confidence to refactor, improve code, take the bad smell out of code and make that code work better. It's where we get our confidence both from our segmented quick efficient builds and our full end-to-end -end system build. And I'd like to dis close this discussion on continuous integration with, again, another best practice from Steve is no one should go home with code checked out. Doesn't mean no one should go home with an unfinished story. As I said, it's more than fine to do a little bit of code, a quarter of a story, and check it in. So at the end of the night, when our developer is ready to go home, they take whatever code it is that they have completed and they check it in and they let it build because then if they're not able to come to work tomorrow morning for illness then if someone else needs to pick up the story then if then if then if there is no code checked out to a desktop and we have the confidence that at the end of the day everything still works and first thing in the morning our nightly build has executed, our system-wide test has completed, and assuming there are no defects, there are no errors on, on the build and test, we have the confidence to move forward and start work on new stories or complete the work on our existing stories. Continuous integration. Our next agile development technique is something that's called spikes. And we've already talked about spikes, we just didn't call it by the name spikes, we talked about the evolutionary architecture. We talked about the evolutionary database. A spike gives us the ability to go out and do deliberate exploration. We have a request, i.e. a story, to do something. And this something is new, it's unique, it's special, it's, we just don't know. What's going to be the best way to do this? We, and we don't want to take the time to do the big upfront design and development and database creation. So we say to the product owner, there's something unique. There's something special. This story isn't as simple to code as their traditional story. It is clear. The need, I as a type of user need to do 
The definition of done is well defined. But we just don't know. We're not quite sure what's the best way, what's the most efficient way. So we take this request for story, we go to the product owner, and we say we need to do a spike. Yes, this story probably has a four story point estimate on it, but I just don't know the best way to do it. Request permission to do a spike. Let me spend three story points and do some deliberate exploration. Let me try and fail several times and find which one works best. Or let me try and explore and experiment and find which way works best. And that's what spikes are all about. It's a deliberate exploration. It's looking for some special way to do something that's unique, new, and special and hasn't been done before. It's adding in the principle of dynamic design. It's adding in the principle of progressive architecture. It's getting the permission from the product owner to do that exploratory work to allow us to move forward, to allow us to achieve the objectives, to allow us to complete stories in a dynamic fashion, gives us the confidence for evolutionary architecture and database definition. Again, spiking, exploration, dynamic evolutionary architecture and database design. Pick the name that you want to use it. The most common name in the Agile Scrum world is seeking permission from the product owner to do a spike. Spikes do not produce prod ready code. And that's why we have to seek permission from the product owner that for these three story points, I'm not going to deliver anything of value to you in the terms of production ready code. The value I'm going to give to you is an understanding of the best way to spend your four story points of effort to complete the story. So again, spikes do not produce production ready code. And this is one of the few instances of work in Scrum where we don't produce something of value, i.e. in the sense of production ready code. But again, I would like to say we still produce something of value in that we have the absolute best way to do it. And our next principle is branches. And as I expressed in the introduction, branches are very similar to refactoring. The key difference is refactoring is taking something that's bad code and again, uh, the concept we often use is the code has smells. It's just not bad in improving. And one of the reasons the code can be bad, as I explained, is it's overly complex. Branches is similar. The key to branches is it has a focus of simply taking complex code and simplifying it. It doesn't necessarily need to be bad code. It could be very well defined quality code. It's just gotten large over a number of stories. We took a module that did a single business function. And as we added in 10 stories of evolution across a number of sprints, this module is no longer delivering a single function. This module is now delivering 1.5 business functions because story number six was a small incremental change based on that single function and it made sense and then story number eight e elaborated on that single function now all of a sudden it has gotten that extra complexity and now our module is no longer delivering just a single piece of unit business functionality it's starting to grow and become more complex so again, we want to take this complex code and literally here is our module and we branch it. So we go back to this is the code for the original function. And this is the code that grew exponentially or grew incrementally as a result of story number six and story number eight and eventually story number 10. Again, may not necessarily be bad code but it's just getting large, it's getting complex, 
it's getting etc 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 and good coding principle says this code needs to be improved very subtle distinction between a branch and a refactor you may choose not to distinguish between branches and refactor and call it all refactoring or call it all branching that's fine I tend to make the distinction simply because refactoring is something that is more urgent we have absolutely bad code and as a scrum master I would encourage my team and I would encourage my product owner to deal with the stories related to refactoring as soon as possible to get rid of that bad smell in my code and when push comes to shove and let's face it there's a lot of pushing and shoving to get stuff done in projects when push comes to shove on my scrum project and I have a couple of requests to do a branch and the product owner kept saying we need to get more business function we need to get more business function the product owner or the business owner is, is on my case I would absolutely acquiesce as a scrum master and says yes you're right we need to focus on business value and especially looking ahead I can't see any stories coming up that are going to begin to make this complex piece of code even more complex so absolutely I will acquiesce and I will say let's put these branching team stories lower on the priority I'd still like to get them done sometime but let's focus on the business value at least in the short term where unlike refactoring I might say no this this code is just so bad I understand you have this need for business value but let's let's get that bad smell out of the code as quickly as possible and as already discussed on refactoring we branch with confidence because we have automated testing as we take the code and split it we also split the tests and when we split the test and assign the test to that particular piece of code or simply put it into the test database and it runs successfully and the code that grew and we branch the tests as well and we run our automated build or continuous integration and all works again we have the confidence that our branches to improve the complex code has been 100 percent successful and we'll conclude this nugget with a quick discussion on a few special types of stories that we often need to introduce into our sprints and into our, our scrum backlog and that's sometimes we need stories simply to implement change we did a story we thought we understood it we made the code we satisfied the what is done we did our show and tell and the product owner says yes you're right you've satisfied what is done you've done what I asked for but you know what I guess the story wasn't well written we simply need to implement a change to the story and that literally is just a new story there's nothing unique and special about these cleanup stories I'm just trying to explain the origin for some of these special stories that are going to take place and, and enter into our product backlog and into our sprints sometimes it's to deal with change sometimes it's just something was missed very similar we did what we asked we satisfied the what is done and it just falls short same thing we review it with the the product owner as a part of our sprint review and it fell short so again we're going to introduce a new story to deal with the missed functionality I'm calling these out because these typically become very high priorities something that's going to be identified as part of the sprint review new stories that's going to come out of the sprint review is going to have an extremely high priority and will most likely be in the next release or the next sprint other stories are going to come about because we've made the story work we did what was asked we satisfied what is done we did the show and tell the product owner says perfect that's exactly what we want we've in, implemented in a release and when we put it in with production volumes it's just it's slow it's inefficient therefore again nothing new we're just going to introduce a new story that says module 15 the customer search 
needs to be more efficient. Worked fine in our test environment where we had a hundred customers but when we moved it into the production and we are searching against a million customer backlog the search is taking you know 15 percent longer than we really want it to be so we're going to introduce a new story to simply make it faster and on a rare occasion we're going to introduce stories to make it prettier we're going to add more functionality we're going to add the bells and the whistles and if that's what the business wants if the product owner approves a story to make an existing story or piece of code prettier the product owner is the boss the product owner creates another story the product owner puts it on the product backlog it gets prioritized we go through story time and it eventually makes it into a sprint backlog and it gets implemented so again nothing special or unique about these concepts of, of cleanup stories it's just terminology that you'll often hear when talking within the scrum community that I wanted to make you aware of. And the final discussion of special terms that you'll often hear in the Scrum community is this concept of a, a release sprint. So we've done all of our sprints for a release. We have satisfied all of the business functionality for the release. And the product owner is very happy and says, let's put it into production the team will often say yes the code itself is ready for production but we need some time we need to do a, a sprint we need two more weeks to make it prod ready and if you have an astute product owner the product owner is going to say what do you mean make it production ready you have sold me on scrum you've tr you've told me that everything you produce has value you've told me that every piece of code every time a story is completed it's ready to be implemented are you telling me that you've been lying to me all this time and we say no absolutely not we have not been lying to you individually every story is ready but the key is individually what we're talking about in a, a release sprint is making sure the collective is ready and that may involve doing things such as performance testing and performance testing in scrum is not common but it's also not uncommon so it, it happens sometimes and if we truly had a release sprint where we did performance testing we may well have found that inefficient customer search when we put it against production volumes so for things like that it's often common to do a performance test but certainly not something that we would necessarily do as part of every release sprint individually the stories are ready but maybe we need to do some user documentation some users manuals or at least dust off the individual snippets of the user manuals and do a little cut and paste for the paragraphs produced as each story into the master doc or even if we did that as part of each story we need to do a read and proofread of the overall user manual to make sure that it is again something that we have total pride in showing we may need to do a little bit of training to the user community we may need to do some operational readiness we may need to do some operational training we may need to create a release package we may need to we may need to any and everything of assorted nature that is within your organizational policies of what needs to happen before code is turned over into production so again relatively common terminology in scrum and agile development is to add an extra sprint and hopefully we can get it within a sprint we certainly wouldn't want to have more than two sprints worth of release sprints because again the goal is 
Individually, the stories are production ready, so there should be an absolute minimal amount of work that we need to do to truly make the release production ready. And this concludes our second nugget on Agile development techniques, which are principles for Agile, which would apply to all Scrum projects. And as discussed, most of these are optional, but strongly recommended that the Scrum team, not the Scrum master, but the Scrum team review and select the principles that apply for their particular engagement. In this nugget, we discussed continuous integration where we code, we build, we test, and we repeat, and we repeat on a continuous basis with small code snippets, and we have an expectation for a daily build and test to give us the confidence that all of the code we're changing is absolutely perfect code and in no way breaks anything that has already been put in place and that the code we're working on now satisfies the expectations, the definition of done for that code. We introduce the concept of spikes, which is exploratory. What's the best way? And this is where we do our continuous architecture and our continuous database design. We take the time out. We request time from the product owner that says we need to do a little exploration to determine what's the very best way to satisfy your current story's requirements. And at the end of it, we identify and select the best way, and then we go on and do the story for which the spike was initiated. We discuss the concept of branches, and branches is really an elaboration of refactoring. Refactoring is based on bad code. Branches is based on taking complex code, branching it to simplify. And we finally closed off this nugget with a few terms and conditions that are often come up in the Scrum community. Need for extra stories to do elaboration, to do uh, refinement, to do various other improvements to the stories that we got from the business. And we talked about the special activities to combine the prod ready code from stories into a release. And that may include performance testing, that may re include documentation, that may include training, and that may simply involve creating the release package that we need to prepare the code for our business. This concludes our second nugget on agile development techniques. I hope this module has been informative for you and thank you very much for viewing.